Uh, and this is a mapping, and this is a session that ran it and loaded the data in your final warehouse. So now I'll turn it out to Mike, uh, who will explain it how difficult it is for him to do it in SSIS. Very funny, Aaron, huh? It's not very difficult to do in SSIS at all. It's actually very easy, much easier than what you just showed. So now for the uh, the part of the session that you guys have been waiting for, SSIS. Uh, Arun, you want to make the presenter so I can uh, show them the good stuff? Yeah. Uh, never mind, I'll make, I'll make myself presenter. There we go. All righty. So, uh, just a little bit about myself before I get into my demo, just to uh, let you know who I am. So I'm Mike Davis. I'm the Managing Project Lead here at Pragmatic Works. I'm an author on several books on SQL Server Business Intelligence. I'm certified also. In fact, here we have a new book coming out. It's on pre-order right now from Amazon, uh, SQL Server Integration Services 2012, 24-hour trainer. Uh, it comes out next month, so you can pre-order from Amazon. Uh, in fact, uh, you should go to Amazon right now and order it. I'll wait. Go ahead. All right, just kidding. All right, so let's get started with the demo. So loading up a type 1 dimension, that's what Arun just did. I'm going to do the same thing inside of uh, an SSIS package. So uh, a little about, bit about the background, why would you do a type 1? So I've got a table coming in here, and let's go and take a look. That's just my table from AdventureWorks. I'm grabbing my person.person .person table here. And if I do a select on this table, you see I've got lots of information here. I have uh, first name, middle name, last name, and lots of other information here. But for this demo here, we're just going to use the uh, first name, middle name, and last name. And then we have this uh, key over here. This is our business key, uh, the name of the, the business entity here, or the person here. So we have uh, uh, four items here that I'm going to pull from this table. And uh, when I put this into my dimension, for my data warehouse, uh, sometimes this information can change. So for example, last names here could change. So if Diane here gets married and her last name changes to uh, Smith instead of uh, Martime, then uh, we want to update that in our data warehouse if it's a type 1. Uh, if we decide it's a type 2, then we'll keep history, which we're going to cover in the second section today. But if it's a type 1, I'm just going to basically update that row in my data warehouse. So how do you do that? Let's go over to SSIS, and I'll show you how to do it, how easy that is to do. Uh, here I'm in a control flow of a package. I've got two items here. The first one I have is called load unknown, and it's basically just a SQL script here. Let me zoom in so you can see this. It's basically a SQL script that just inserts some unknown values into our dimension here with a negative one as a surrogate key. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, I, I know that sometimes when I load up my fact table, there's going to be times where uh, I may have something missing from my dimension. So for example, Maybe you got some late arriving information for your uh, for your dimension, like the uh, you're loading sales information up, and uh, your sales guys just haven't sent in the customer information yet. So your your customer dimension is missing a customer, but you have a sale on your fact table that you're loading up. Uh, this is common in the insurance industry. This happens if someone hasn't been processed yet, and then they already make a claim uh, right when they get their policy. Uh, so we want to load up a row on our table here. Uh, it's negative one, set it to unknown. So when I load my fact table later on, I can use this negative one key as my uh, kind of catch-all for anything that's missing from my uh, dimensions here. So that's why I'm doing that. And after you do that, now we go to the, the meat and potatoes of this, and that's the data flow. I open up the data flow task here, and this is how simple it is to load a type one dimension in SSIS. So the first thing I have here is a source. If I open that up, you'll see it's just a query from our table here. I've got a little is null here, so if the, the name is null, I'm uh, putting in spaces here. That stops my package from breaking later on and when I'm doing comparisons. Uh, so it'll say I can't compare null values, and I'll show you that in a minute. And then we go to my next item here, which is a lookup. Uh, you can think of a lookup transform as basically a join. So if I go in here to the uh, columns here, you see I'm joining my uh, columns that are incoming from my source. My, this is my OLATP over here. So I'm going to be coming from the left-hand side here. And then over on the right-hand side, this is already my existing dimension. So my existing dimension I have, I'm going to that dimension. I'm saying go get me the S key that exists and the first name, middle name, and last name that's already on the table. And I'm pulling those in, and I'm giving them, giving them names here, first name existing, middle name existing, and, and last name existing. So I know that's already on my existing dimension. Uh, you want to come up with good naming conventions here. I like to use existing here. Uh, some people use dim or something like that, just to, so you know it's coming from the dimension. 
All right, and I want this to be a left outer join. So under my general tab here, you have, I've set it to ignore failures here, which basically makes this a left join now. So if it doesn't find a match, uh, it's not going to cause a failure. It's going to go ahead and pass everything through. And what will happen then is here under my columns, these first name, middle name, and last name will be null, and my surrogate key here will be null if it doesn't find a match, which would indicate that it's a new row. It's not an existing item that's on my dimension already. All right, so once we have that lookup set up, now we have our data basically joined together from our dimension over to our existing OLEDP data. And then we go into our next option here, which is our conditional split. And we open up conditional split. And I've got three outputs here. I've got a new, I've got no changes, and I have updates. So if, uh, if the surrogate key is null, which means I didn't find a match from my uh, table coming back, if my surrogate key is null, then I know this is a new row. And so that's going to go down my new path here. So I'm going to have three different paths coming out of my conditional split. Next option here is no changes. So uh, the circuit key was not null. So there is a circuit key that exists on the table. But I need to know, do I need to make changes or not? And so what I've done here is said first name equal to first name, and middle name equal to middle name. And then if you scroll over a little further, it says and last name is equal to last name. So I'm comparing the uh, last name coming in or the first name coming in to the existing first name that's on the table. And the same thing with the middle name here. I'm comparing those to see if there's any difference between them. If all three columns are the same, then there are no changes. I don't need to do any kind of updates. If both of these two right here are not true, then it goes to my default down below, which is updates, and it's going to update my table for me. Now this option right here, this works well when you only have a few rows, or I'm sorry, a few columns actually coming in. If you have hundreds of columns, then this derived column here could be quite long, have lots of uh, text in there. You may even reach the, the 8,000 character limit there. So uh, instead of putting in that, you may want to do something else like a, a hash byte or checksum and compare those instead of comparing all the rows. So once I've done that comparison, I've got three outputs coming out below here. My updates are over here. My new is over here. And then right here at the bottom, this is my uh, no changes. Since there's no changes, I don't need to map that anywhere. So those rows are just going to get dropped. They're not going to go anywhere, which is exactly what I want. 